the exposition here, we have over 40 groups, both uh, local and international, uh, that are here. We have technologists that are demonstrating their technologies, and these are relatively mature technologies. We also have first responders from local, state, and federal groups that are demonstrating how they do their operations and what they need to do in disaster response. The whole idea is to get these groups together, allow the technologists to see how the operations go down, and then allow the operations folks to see the technology that's on its way. The robot is a small tactical robot. It's pretty significant in order to, to save lives. Probably one of the hardest things we do as hazmat technicians is dealing with chlorine. This happens to be a uh, one-ton chlorine cylinder. Uh, chlorine is shipped throughout the United States and it's uh, highly toxic. Uh, it could cause a lot of harm. So what we do is we make an entry in a level A suit. That level A suit gives us a clean environment, a safe environment to work in. In this situation, uh, it's got a two-way radio on it also, so if they do identify a casualty, they can find out if that casualty is conscious or unconscious. They can actually talk to casualty if he is conscious and listen back to what he has to say. It's important because uh, we're limiting the amount of time that we have in that environment, in that toxic environment. Instead of putting a human in that environment, we send in a robot, and the robot pretty much does the same work that we do, uh, and it's still operated by, by a human, which happens to be a firefighter. The LS3 is a legged robot. Uh, it's, it's rather large. It's actually grown uh, in time compared to its uh, big dog predecessor. And its big role right now is it can carry equipment. So you can imagine a case where you have rucksacks and other things you're able to put on it, and the robot will actually follow a leader uh, through you know, any kind of train that you might have it approach. So the goal with Wildcat is to push the capabilities and push the speed of these legged robots. So Wildcat is able to move very fast uh, and is very agile uh, moving through the environment. What I have right here is a modular snake robot which we've built uh, completely in-house at Carnegie Mellon. It'll execute gates uh, just like a, a real snake, like a sidewinder or a slithering and that's how it's actually able to, to move around. So there's a lot of things that are really unique about this robot. Uh, so the first thing you might notice, right, is that it doesn't have any wheels, it doesn't have any tracks. So in order for us to actually move, we have to wiggle our body around. Uh, and, you know, it becomes pretty difficult, like if you're on flat ground where, you know, wheels would really make sense. But if you can imagine being in like a rubble pile where, you know, a normal uh, sort of standard robot with tracks or wheels might have difficulty, for us, by undulating our body around, we actually sort of excel in those situations. This is essentially what happens in most major disasters, whether it be uh, hurricanes or earthquakes, basically anything that can cause a building structure to become unstable. These are the basic procedures that we use uh, to not only extricate victims, but to keep our responders safe.